visit to this library? <laughs> Actually, no, I've had more than that because I've never wanted that much for you. It's probably my eighth time to the library and my fifth time to Fairfield, Iowa. Uh, I have kind of an interesting story about why I came to Fairfield, uh, and Janet's sitting back here, so she might remember this, but I had a dream, and Maharishi came to me and said, go detox my people, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. And the next morning, uh, Janet called me, <coughs> and she had 18 people that wanted to lose weight and have intuitive <laughs> readings and do different things, and uh, that was like the second messenger saying, you need to come to Fairfield. And so I planned a trip for April of 2011. And in that trip, I was able to see many, many people and help them get on a, a course for detoxing the body. 74. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was excellent. It was absolutely fabulous because uh, we were planning to go to Europe and on my manifestation board, I had I needed to earn some money, and <coughs> I made the exact amount of money I wanted to earn, and went to Europe and had a great time. Uh, but what, one of the things that I really noticed was uh, everybody needs more follow-up, and when your, your doctor heads off to Europe, it's like, whoa, where'd he go? And our energy kind of stays with us and does uh, certain things to help us heal. And so, what I'm going to talk about tonight is transphenomenal healing. Has any member, you or any member of your family or friends, ever experienced a healing you can't explain? And I think that all of us can think of some magical healing that has happened, some miracle. Uh, Byron Katie made a famous statement. When you argue with reality, <laughs> you only lose 100% of the time. <laughs> And I tend to disagree with that argument because I argue with reality all the time <laughs> and win. So we're working in a realm of reality that's different and trans phenomena. Phenomena are things you can't explain through science or through your, your mind. And when this happens, our, fi our five senses only pick up 5% of the energy around us. And so it's real important to remember that there's a lot of stuff going on that we don't even know about. And we can't see, we can't hear, we can't taste it, we can't feel it. And, and we, you know, our minds can't wrap around it. And so most of us are living in Newtonian physics in the five senses where we can actually see what's going on around us. And I'm here to tell you that's only about three to five percent of what's going on. The rest of it is subtle energies, elemental energies, uh, mental, astral, all kinds of energies that are hidden us. And energies from the angelic realms, energies from planetary effects on us. Uh, you know, I totally believe in astrology, numerology, and all of the ologies because <laughs> they are based in quantum mechanics rather than Newtonian physics. Let's go, go to the next slide. So what is our reality? What is our reality? And all of you believe in this, I'm pretty sure, that are here. We're infinite beings of light. Our energy is infinite and expansive. Some of us are contracted. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that. We create our reality through our <coughs> attention, thoughts, emotions, physical choices, and interaction with the infinite or spiritual realm and others. And health comes from a healthier reality. Uh, one of my most important things I do with people is when they come in really sick and they're dying, I ask them, do you want to live? And if they say, no, not really, I say, well, we'll make you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and if they say, I want to live, I tell them, well, let's, let's help you live and live a good life. Let's get rid of this, this disease or, or inflammation or problem you're having. Now, multiple sources of toxins are in our environment, and they can be reduced or eliminated. Uh, I found that over the years, when I started medical school, 0.5% of the people I, I dealt with on, on, in medicine, my patients, 0.5% had a chronic inflammatory disease. 
Now guess how much that is up to. 60% of the people in the United States are diagnosed with a chronic inflammatory disease, and 30% are diagnosed with, with two or more, which is crazy. So I clean up my environment and body, and I help others to be educated, you're going to help change the planet, aren't we? So healthy mantras, I just want to talk about this. I'm going to tell a story first, though. I had a lady come in to me, and literally, when she opened the door, she could barely open the door, and she walks in, and I, I can feel the energy of people, and I couldn't feel anything off this woman. And I looked at her, and I said, are you a ghost? <laughs> and you know what she said to me? Just about. And I was like, wow. And I said, why can't I see any of your energy? And she said, I came here to be healed, not to be questioned. I don't have the strength to answer all these questions. I came to you because I have stage four cancer. My other doctors told me there's nothing I can do, and I believe you can heal me because I asked my angels and they said, you're the one. This was seven years ago. And I looked at her and I thought, oh, gee, what did her angels tell her? <laughs> you know? And anyway, we, we went about the process. The first thing I asked her is, do you want to live? And she said, yes. I've got two young kids. I think her kids were like two and four at the time. And, uh, you know, a younger woman, she was only 40, 42, and um, beautiful, blonde, blonde, blonde hair, but her body was literally eating itself up. Uh, she showed me some of the wounds on her body, and, and literally her flesh was decaying. There were huge holes and ulcerations, and just looked really, really bad. And Stage four cancer is an interesting thing. Once, once you get that diagnosis, you go, oh, my hell, you know, am I going to make it through this? Well, I'm here to tell you I made it through it because 26 years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four malignant melanoma, and it had invaded into my spine and my brain. And I was able to cure that using some of the methods I'm going to tell you about. Now, this woman, first thing we did was we hooked her up to this device I've got called the body scan. And it couldn't even pick up her energy. The, the, she was flatlining. <laughs> and so I had to literally ask the angels and ask the universe to give her enough energy so she could show up on the machine. And as soon as we did that, she showed up on the machine, and then I made her some remedy uh, from the machine. And uh, I put her on uh, some herbs to clean out the tumors and the parasites and the fungus and the viruses that were taking over her body. So we did a lot of stuff and told her to avoid sugars and toxins and you know change uh, everything. And literally, uh, and I also did some energy work on her to help give her enough energy so she could make it through the first 24 hours because I knew the first 24 hours were going to be very difficult. And I did what I call toning on her, which is God sounds sent out to to heal the body. And back then I was doing certain tones to help the different chakras, and I really sent a lot to, to her, her chest and, and everything. And so I told her that night she would probably drain a lot of fluid out of those tumors and those, those wounds. And sure enough, she literally had to get in the bathtub that night because she was draining so much fluid all night long. And she came to me the next morning. I mean, this was literally about 18 hours later. And everything looked horrible, but energetically, all cancer was dead. And during the night, she told me how she drained all this fluid all night long. And, and everything was shrinking and, and scarring and, and going through a process. And she came to me the next day, and she says, what do I do? I look horrible. I don't want to look like this the rest of my life. And so I asked the angels who told her that I would help her heal. I said, what do we do? Because I didn't know what to do. And literally, they told me to bring in the sun people. Now, the sun people, 
who are the sun people? I didn't know who the sun people were. And they said the people living on the sun. And I'm like, I didn't know there were people living on the sun. Did any of you? And it's like, well, okay, let's ask them to come and heal you. And I told her, go back home, lay in your tub, and, and I don't know why, but I, I had her lay in her tub and but had her call in the, the sun people. And she went home uh, and called in the sun people, and she saw these, these beings that were golden came in and started pouring golden fluid over her body. And as they were pouring it, her, her breasts started looking normal again. Her, her lesion on her back went away and started looking normal again. There was, more, there was a lot of scar tissue. Don't get me wrong. It took a while to totally heal her. But uh, within 48 hours, she pretty much was doing really good. And you know what she did? She came into my office. There was a couple people in there. And she flipped up her shirt and said, look. <laughs> and I looked, and, and her breasts were perfect. And I was like, holy cow, how'd that happen? You know, and she said, it was the sun people. They came and poured the water over me. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that story because that was like, wow, a miracle. You know, that's one of those things you don't see every day. It's a transphenomenal healing and uh, very, very impressive. My own healing was a, uh, similar. Uh, one of the things, too, we, we helped her with was there was some scar tissue, and she didn't want the scar tissue either, and she desired to have her body look perfect again. And so we started using uh, different enzymes and different products on the skin to help uh, the scarring, like natokinase and seropeptate. We used a lot of coconut oil, a lot of uh, 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 grapeseed oil, and uh, believe it or not, olive oil. Arglo. Oh, it was interesting. When, when I showed her the Arglo, she said, I've got to have that. Her, her internal knowing knew. I don't know how many of you ever heard of the Arglo. It's a, it's a mixture that Edgar Casey came out with to help the skin heal and help uh, heal fungal infections and different problems with the skin. I was told when I got cancer, the reason I was carrying the product is I used it all the time because I was told by uh, an intuitive that if I would use this Arglo every day, my malignant melanoma would not occur, recur, because it was a black fungus. And uh, Arglo kills fungus. Very good for keeping the skin from aging. So anyway, I'm gonna go on to healthy mantras and then we'll tell some more stories. But uh, when going to the bathroom, number one and number two, say in your mind or out loud, I release the toxins in my body. I do that every time I go to the bathroom. Well, maybe not every time, but most times. And the reason I do that, I know that what you tell your body to do, it will do. Because our minds are very powerful. They actually control what goes on in our physiology. And they control what goes on in our astral plane, our mental plane, our spiritual plane. And so when you breathe, I release the toxic vapors from my system and bring in healing prana and oxygen. The prana helps feed our soul. One of the reasons this woman had no energy whatsoever is she put a stealth energy around her and a protective layer that didn't even allow the prana to come in and feed her, her spirit. And I had to tell her, you, you need to release that and let the prana come in. It's like when Christ said, don't hide your light under, under a bushel, but let it shine to the world. That serves two purposes. We help give our good energy to other people, but we also can receive the good energy. Uh, when we eat our food, bless it. You know, we've always grew up with our families blessing the food, but I bless the food to cleanse and detoxify my body, and I also try to eat the best food available, so the, the least toxic food available, uh, organic foods and, and different things. And when we drink, we need to bless the fluid to cleanse and detoxify our body. Uh, it's quite interesting. They add chemicals to our, our uh, water system <coughs> for a couple of reasons. The fluoride to, to keep decay away, which has only been proven to do that up to five years of age. And they add chlorine, which is a very highly toxic oxidizer. And it kills bacteria, but it also in certain quantities can harm our body. And so one of the things
things that I, I learned to do, my wife was running a marathon a couple of years ago, and we would run up to this fountain, and it was the only water around, and I didn't want to carry water with me, and the water tasted terrible. St. George had horrible, uh, it got really calcified, a lot of minerals, and it's even got, uh, uh, oh yeah, what's the poison uh, that women <coughs> give their husbands to kill them? Arsenic. Arsenic. <laughs> arsenic. <laughs> yes. It has arsenic in it. And every year we get this nice pamphlet that says how our water has passed all of the testing and everything. And then in little fine print it says, except for the arsenic, which is above U.S. standards. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a beautiful pamphlet. And nobody ever reads the whole thing. But I've read it and I was like, whoa, we got arsenic in our water. And they say how it's too expensive to remove it. So they give us, you know, our stamp of approval, even though we've got plenty of arsenic. But anyway, uh, I blessed this fountain that the water would taste good and that would, would be good for us. And I drank it, and I was like, oh, this, this tastes good. Vicki, come over here and taste this water. And she came over, and she's like, yeah, that is good. That is good. And it was pretty amazing, because every time we ran by, we blessed that fountain. And then other people would tell us, oh, the fountain, this is the best-tasting fountain in St. George. And, you know, it was, it was fascinating just because we do have that quantum ability within our souls to bless things to bless others, to bless the water, to bless the food, all kinds of stuff. So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, one of the things, I, I'm not going to take a lot of time because I want Angela to spend some time talking about some of this stuff because she does healing trips down to Peru and it's pretty interesting. I've gone twice and I love both times. But spiritual healers, you know, a lot of, when I was in medical school, I was told this was all quackery. Don't get involved in that, because it's quackery. What does quackery mean, you know? Uh, the history of that, that term was, uh, there was a physician who started doing some of this stuff, and I believe his, he had the name of quack, and so they <laughs> started calling it quackery. And, uh, but what I found is these guys have something to offer all of us. It's fascinating. Chiropractors, naturopathic physicians, craniosacral therapists, massage therapists, intuitive healers, shaman, medicine men or women, sound or toning therapists, acupuncture specialists, past life regressionists, many, many more, herbalists, nutritionists, homeopathy doctors. I, I have used literally everybody on this list in my life. And I'm here to tell you, I should have been dead at the day if I'd have listened to the doctors who told me I was going to be dead in three months, go home and get your house in order, I wouldn't be here talking to you. But I've used all of this. I started out using herbs, and Holly Clark was a microbiologist of all things, and she had found that parasites cause cancer. And she told me my melanoma was due to a black fungus flukes, and some viruses. And so we started cleaning these things up. She also told me I had heavy lead poison, told me to divorce my wife and do other things. And <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty radical. I didn't divorce my wife. I didn't move out of my house. But I was cured within two months. And pretty dang amazing. And over the years, uh, I've had other problems. And I started using these people because that's where I got healed. Not saying anything to dish the medical doctors. They're great for certain things, but let me tell you, spiritual healers are amazing, and they're good for you. And so if one approaches you, or you feel you need to go see one, go see one. Um, it was really interesting. I went to Hawaii a year ago to finish my book, because uh, I had another near-death experience. <laughs> I got a, a stone in my ampulla of Vader. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's where, that's a, the duct that enters the uh, small intestine from the pancreas and the, the gallbladder and the liver. And literally, all of my pancreatic juices and the bile started backing up into my pancreas and caused what was called pancreatitis. Now, when you get pancreatitis, it's not fun. 
because those enzymes start eating your pancreas. They start eating it. They just love it. And pretty soon, you're, you don't have much of a pancreas left. By the time I was able to get that stone passed, I had 10% of my pancreas left, which isn't much. And I was nigh on needing insulin, and my sugars were out of control, and you know my whole body was out of whack. Uh, and my, my uh, angel said, you can go to the hospital and have a procedure, a Whipple procedure, and you'll probably die. Or you can go to Hawaii and eat passion fruit and papaya. <laughs> Guess what I did? <laughs> it was so interesting because the morning my guides told me that, uh, Barbara, who's Angela's sister, came over to our house, and this is my wife's sister, and said to us, oh, we're going to Hawaii. And I'm like, which island are you going to? The big island. And I'm like, that's the one I'm supposed to go to. Do you have any more tickets? She said, no. And I'm like, well, I'm dying. And I need to go. <laughs> so call your friend and see if he's got any more tickets. Because she had a friend who worked for the United Airlines. And she called him up. And it so happened his, his uh, boss had given him two extra tickets for Christmas bonus that morning. And he sold them to us. And so we all, eight of us, went to, to Hawaii. And we had the most wonderful time. But the most important part of that whole trip was I was eating the passion fruit and the the papaya, and they're enzymatically very good for your body. They ate that stone up enough that by the time we got up to the caldera, I was told to go up to the caldera and do the toning, you know, the, the God sound. And the vibration of that God sound literally popped that stone out of my pancreas and, and it started to rain. It was so nice because all of a sudden this scabby, nice sort of pain just went away. Oh, thank you, thank you. You know, it was amazing, but it was it was another trans phenomenal healing. I mean, it's it's crazy. You think about it, you go, okay, who's he listening to when he when he says this stuff? Well, actually, I I listen to these guys, but I listen to the people on the other side too, the, the angels and my guides and, and uh, those sort of things. Now, uh, there's many many modalities, including all of these therapists. There's single herbs, and herbal combinations, there's tonics, liquid brews, non-fermented and fermented. I probably got burned with the stake in a past life for making those. But anyway, uh, homeopathic remedies and tinctures, essential oils and blends, kombucha and medicinal mushrooms, fermented foods, probiotics. We just got done with a, a marvelous, marvelous meeting talking about how all of our biomes have been altered <coughs> through chemicals, through antibiotics, through different things that all of us are exposed to. And it's literally altered the flora, the good bacteria that live on our skin and in our intestines. And if we can correct that, we can correct a lot of the chronic inflammatory diseases. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. So, so good bacteria in your body do a lot of good things. Bad bacteria in your body do bad things. And the uh, fungus does bad things. So, and so do parasites. And I, you, you guys all know I talk a lot about parasites. So, But cleanses, fast, sweating, yoga, all of these things are very good. Liver cleanses, kidney cleanses, lymphatic drainage, heavy metals, chelating, uh, petrochemical and plastic cleansing healing gems and blessed trinkets and items, protective amulets and devices, surround yourself with high vibrating beings, including good friends. Very important. Uh, I have a little story about this petrochemical and plastic cleansing. Uh, the systemics uh, formulas people developed a 60-day uh, detox, they called it. I turned it into a 90-day detox because 60 days was too fast. A lot of people had Herzheimer reactions, which are reaction too fast of cleansing reactions. And so I did this because I wanted to try it out myself <coughs> and see if it would be good for my, my patients. And it, uh, after 20 days of doing it, all of a sudden I could not go to the bathroom. And I was like, what in the heck is going on? The first part cleans up the organs of elimination. 
came to find out plastics get into our lymphatics and they plug up the ducts in our colon. Our lymphatics years and years ago used to dump our toxins in our colon and then we'd poop them out. Well, since the advent of plastics, a lot of us get those clogged up. And so the toxins just circulate around and the, the liver can get rid of a few it does or the kidneys can get rid of a few it does or the skin can get rid of a little bit it does. But, but truthfully, the best way to get rid of plastics is pass them out through the lymph ducts in the colon and get them out of your system. <coughs> That's why the rate of colon cancer and all these things have gone up because these plastics stay in our body and cause hormonal changes, uh, they attach to our cell membranes, they cause all kinds of problems. But anyway, I like had to go, okay angels, why is my colon plugged up? And you know what they told me? Plastics. I was like, plastics? What the heck? And I was like, well, how do I get rid of it? And they said, you're going to have to clean it out. Have you or somebody else put their finger up there and pull that plastic plug out. And literally, I had to dig into my, my rectum and I pulled out a piece of plastic about this long and about the size of a nickel around and it was very odd shape because plastics kind of accumulate. They aggregate to each other. That's kind of one of the things they do. That's how come you can make plastic stuff. I saw this printer, this brand new printer on the TV other, the other night. You can make whatever the heck you want out of plastic with this printer. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. But we're making stuff in our colons that clogs our colons up, literally, and makes it so the lymph doesn't dump all the toxins out. And so uh, this, this particular cleanse helps clean out the petrochemicals. Now, where do you get petrochemicals? Where do you think you get them? You know, for years we were told, oh, geez, our water's bad. So we drank bottled water. And what was a bottle in plastic? And then we had plastic containers. And, you know, everything that we store our food in was plastic. And now we're getting smart and we're storing it in glass. But we're still exposed to thousands of molecules of plastic every year. And so it's important to clean those things out. And there, the uh, Systemic Formulas has made products that actually pull these off. And there's other companies too, but I, I found these guys are on the cutting edge because they came out with this latest thing about the biome and helping get your, your good flora back in. You know, they talk about convalescence. I'm getting close to the end here. Uh, convalescence, what's the definition of convalescence? When you're sick, you actually do things to help your body heal. Instead of getting out in the hospital and going right back to work, you get out of the hospital and you take care of yourself. You allow your body to heal. And during that process, you give yourself basic things. The paleo diet is going crazy. Why? Because it's the original human diet. And what they did with this, they took and you would take the bones and the meat and throw it all in a pot and you would cook it for at least 24 hours so it leaches all the minerals out and all the good things out of the bones and, and the, the meat. And then you drink the broth because the broth, literally the, the bad bacteria, the bad fungus in your body can't eat it and so they die off. And so you drink this broth for three to five days. Why? It takes three to five days to, for your intestine reform the cilia to be healed. And then you start slowly adding vegetables and good things. Well, knowing I was coming to, coming to uh, Fairfield, actually I didn't do this.